For all the creators out there who record a lot of gameplay footage, I've tested so many different applications for recording gameplay, and without a doubt my favorite way to record is by using the NVIDIA GeForce Overlay. The overlay is extremely performance, there's hardly any impact to your in-game frame rate at all when you're recording, and the video quality that comes out of it is very, very good. On top of that, it's just really flexible to use. You can do traditional stop-start style of recordings, and you can use it to retroactively save the past few minutes of gameplay when something happens that you want to clip. So no matter what your workflow or your intention is, you get the best of both worlds when you use this. You can bind the primary controls for stopping, starting, and clipping to keys on your keyboard, so whenever you're gaming, you literally press one button on your keyboard and you can start saving footage or recording whatever just happened. No need to tab out of your game or anything like that. I have the GeForce Overlay running pretty much all the time, I'm actually using it to record this video right now, and for me it works extremely well. I love that peace of mind that I'm never going to miss anything that I may want to bring into the studio later, like a clip, and I love that it's so damn convenient to use. Sometimes I may be going into a game to gather specific footage for like a scripted video or something, and other times maybe I'm just casually playing with my buddies and I want to save all the funny things that happen. The GeForce Overlay is what I use for all of that. So if you've got an Nvidia card and you want to get set up like this, I'll show you exactly what I did in the app and point out a few important things so you can hit the ground running like I did. Alright, first things first, the overlay is part of the GeForce Experience desktop app, so you're going to need to install that. You can download it straight from NVIDIA's website, just Google uh, GeForce Experience and it should pop right up. Once you've got that running, it should look something like this. If you're unfamiliar with what this app is in general, um, it's basically just a driver host for your NVIDIA graphics card. It just offers a more convenient way to keep your drivers up to date. So to find the overlay, click here on the gear icon, and then just make sure that in-game overlay is enabled. Once you've got that switched on, you can press Alt-Z on your keyboard to open the overlay. Now, there are a few settings within the overlay that you're going to want to take a look at. Click the gear icon, and then scroll down to Recordings. Set this video's path to wherever you want your recordings to be saved to. You can see I've got mine on my D drive in a folder called it Gameplay Footage. And pro tip here, just make a generic folder like I did to hold all of your footage because the app is smart enough to create subfolders within for whatever game you're currently playing. So let me show you guys that. I just go to my uh, D drive here and Explorer into Gameplay Footage. You can see all these subfolders titled by game name. The app created all of these automatically and it's smart enough to record back into these folders based on whatever game I'm playing. So that's pretty nice. Now back in the overlay settings again, scroll down to video capture. These are your quality settings for your recordings. You'll have to find out what works best for you of course, but for a frame of reference, I can show you what I do and give you some tips on how to hone in on the right settings for you. I have my resolution set to in-game. I game mostly at 2K resolution and I have a 2K monitor, so with this setting I know that I'm always going to be recording at the same resolution of whatever game is running. So that works really well for me. FPS I have set to 60. Currently the only options supported in here are 30 FPS and 60 FPS. Unless your game isn't pushing above 30 FPS for some reason, you're always going to want 60 here. And finally that leaves the bitrate. I suggest that you select custom quality so that this bitrate slider appears and then you can just set it manually. The bitrate that you choose it should take into consideration your resolution, your hardware resources, and of course the game you're currently playing. I'm going to criminally oversimplify this, but when in doubt just remember that if your game has a ton of motion, you probably need more bitrate to compensate for that. Like I said before, I game in 2K, I like working with 2K footage, so my bitrate is always somewhere between 30 and 50 MIPS, and even that is generously high. If you're recording in 1080, you can most likely get away with something like 20 to 30. Unless you're recording at 4K, you probably won't ever need to surpass 50K bitrate in here, but play around with it. Do a couple test recordings, watch your resources, and you should be able to find something that works for you. On my 2080, I can game in 2K, I can be recording in 2K at 50 MIPS, 60 FPS, and I get buttery smooth, crystal clear gameplay footage. And I have virtually zero impact on the actual FPS of whatever game I'm playing. So there's hardly any sacrifice to performance here. The encoding at work behind the scenes is extremely good. Now go back to the main overlay screen here and enable instant replay just by clicking on this. This is the feature that will allow you to clip the past couple of minutes of gameplay retroactively. I typically leave this on all the time, and again I notice very little performance impact here. I have my instant replay length set to 2 minutes, but if you want it to be longer or shorter, just go back into settings and video capture. 
and you can change it right at the top here, instant replay length. So you've told the app where to store the recordings, you've configured your quality settings, and you've enabled the instant replay feature. Now to make all of this extremely convenient, set some hotkeys. Back in the overlay settings, select keyboard shortcuts and scroll down to the record section here. These are the important ones. Let's start with the easy one on the bottom. Toggle manual recording on, off, and save. This is your standard stop and start hotkey. You press it, you start recording. You press it again, you stop recording, and the file is saved. Simple as that. I have mine set to the dash symbol on my numpad. Now, for this next one right above it, save the last two minutes recorded. This is your instant replay clip hotkey. As long as the instant replay feature is turned on, when you press this key, you will save the last two minutes of gameplay. This works really great for highlight reels and that sort of stuff. If you clip something, and then you clip something again right after, it will work just fine, don't worry. The second clip though may be shorter than two minutes, because there hasn't actually been a whole two minutes of time that has passed since you pressed the key the first time. And I keep saying two minutes because that's what I use, but like I said, you can set that time frame to be whatever you want in the settings. Last hot key here on top that I like to use is toggle instant replay on off. That does exactly what it sounds like, it just enables or disables the instant replay feature. I have this hotkey because I do like to be able to switch it off whenever I'm not gaming. If I'm just like browsing the web or something, I don't need to have the overlay keeping the past two minutes stored. And that's pretty much it. With those hotkeys set up, you are good to go now. Other random preferences you may want to take a look at in settings, HUD layouts, I turned off everything except for the status indicator on the top here. I just didn't like the extra clutter that these other things added. Also in settings audio, uh, there is an insanely clutch feature in here that's tucked away and I want to draw some attention to this real quick. Um, separate both tracks. It's not going to show me this because I'm actually recording right now, but you should see a button in here that says separate both tracks. If you don't know what you're doing, then maybe stay away from this. It's all going to depend on your audio setup, of course. But what this allows you to do is split your microphone audio away from your gameplay audio in the recording. This can be a complete game changer in the studio when you're editing because you can individually delete one or the other. If you set this up, be aware that not all media players are able to play multi-track audio. So if you're watching your clips back, and you only hear one track, it may not be playing both. You might think you have a problem here, wondering what the heck's going on, uh, when in reality it's working just fine. I learned that the hard way. Um, just chuck the file into Premiere or whatever you use to edit with, and you should be able to see and hear both audio tracks as you would expect. All right, I'm going to call this video here. I can tell you personally that this app and this general setup has completely changed the way that I produce content. It's such a solid and flexible beginning for my pipeline over something like OBS. So I hope you guys find this helpful as well. If you are a creator and you want more tips like this, then hit up my channel for more. And do leave me some comments down below. I read them all. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.